guys hope everyone is doing well so for today's video we're gonna have a vod review um so this is post coaching so since i got my frappy coaching i probably play like 20 25 games with mixed results i'm not gonna lie so i'd say like 20 percent of my games are really good um maybe 50 percent are meh like i play some really bad fights but i also play some really good fights and and i'm just like getting better at it i'm just learning and 30 percent of them are just like pretty bad games you know so so far not not too good but i mean we knew it was gonna be this way and it was gonna get better with time so if you guys didn't catch up on the story uh i used to be a perma splitting player i got coach by top 20 player on the server and we both agreed on the fact that i need to be there for the objectives i need to participate in skirmishes and i need to actually default to perma fighting whenever i can just so i can learn fighting again because i'm really bad at this part of league of legends so so yeah that's like the the, the final big step that's the final big i don't know like tool that i need to add to my arsenal to be able to be a complete player let's say and i'm facing a various matchup also i think it's uh, it's a good opportunity to show you like how i manage virus so i think I, I i made a bunch of mistakes early on oh by the way this game i played it at 6 a.m being half drunk maybe a bit high also uh i don't usually go out like for the whole year like 2023 i maybe went out um uh, I don't know, like four times in the whole year. I mean, I used to go out all the time and then my life changed a lot. And, but, but yesterday was a, was a special, uh, special occasion. So I did go out and because I'm so obsessed about league these days, I, when I came back, I was just like, I didn't want to go to sleep. I just wanted to play some more. So, so yeah. So, so, so the very first place like yeah it's gonna get a bit sloppy so basically versus virus uh you want to abuse what makes you strong um okay i mean i just like the very same play but i wait for level three before dashing in and i would kill him so so what what makes you strong basically is like the the all-ins that, that you can have on him he doesn't have mobility um so if you can just trade a bit him on an all-in starting like full hp versus full hp like you're supposed to to be able to win that depending on some stuff that i'm gonna talk about um you need to abuse the infinite sustain that you have because he has zero sustain and you need to abuse the fact that he's pretty vulnerable to ganks and you also need to yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah you can see that i was wrong but i swear it's gonna be a good game though <laughs> I swear it's gonna be a good game. It, it gets better later. Um, yeah, just just give it five minutes and then it's it's gonna get better um, if I remember well at least. Um, so um, so yeah, and also you need to respect his strengths, which is like his passive stacks into uh, proccing his passive with with Q or E, and um, that's what make the pig strong with Radiant Virtue it's because his passive does enough damage for him to have damage and then with Virtue he now has tankiness as well um, so for example like if he throws an ability you know that you can go for, uh, for a big all-in but here like I'm okay well I should have been respecting Pios's Q oh yeah so, so I went back in I went back in because I had double subs and he didn't have subs um, so basically versus virus if you're full hp versus full hp and let's say he throws a q you don't really want to see it as an opportunity why because you can go on him he's gonna stack passive proc it with e stack passive again and then he's gonna have he's gonna have his q basically um but if he's like mid hp and he throws an ability well then you can go for that play that they called you can like, i mean you can just go in because it's just gonna get like one passive thingy so let's just read various abilities because you guys are gonna face various stuff like be, be, yeah people play play him so much these days um so let's see 
begin charging for his drawbacks, his next charge, sowing himself by 20%, etc. Um, damage and blight detonation effects are increased by up to 50% based on charge time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's about it's about the W right? Passive various attack deal. Okay, I thought it was his passive. It's actually his W passive. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, so his attacks deal 13 magic damage and apply a blight stack for six seconds, and the max is three stacks. And the E and the Q and I guess the ult as well will proc this uh, stacks to deal damage. And it's like percent max health damage. That's why if you go AP Varus, you can actually one shot tanks because it's percent max health magic damage. Okay, so so yeah, it's it's all about this. It's legit all about this, and and we're gonna see how we can manage. But basically, if you if you get ahead, you can just like stat check him and just like go all in. But you need to respect his burst because he has like a pretty big burst, especially with his W active. So here, my wave was terrible, like trading kills was not good there. So now I have a bit of time and I use that to claim some experience mid. Just be a, pay, a bit of a pain in the ass for Graves. And we're gonna go back top. And now the game actually starts for me, like now I will start doing good things. If I remember well. So what we're gonna see this game is how well we are going to play for the objectives and how well we're going to skirmish and team fight. And it's going to be very important because that's the thing that I'm working on. So yeah, so far I think it, it, it has been like 50% win rate with the with my practicing, which is which is still pretty decent. Like I, I thought I would have like 30% win rate for 40 games or something because I'm playing in such a such a different way. What I'm noticing that is that I managed to be there and to have some really good impact even in games that were hard losing, like were matching in objectives. But the issue is I have a hard time like doing that without missing a ton of CS. And I think my my average CS is around like seven and a half or eight recently, which is like really really bad. Um, as an average to have in the mirror oh yeah this got pretty close this got pretty close but it's gonna make us come back so i will allow myself to go in times two speed at some moments because like we're not really too interested in laning phase basically i'm looking to as always like see on what wave i'm gonna crash get this crash reset get good tempo buy stuff we're gonna go for Kraken. Most likely this game. I, I've been doing a lot of Kraken Triforce also for those skirmishes. So it's between Kraken Stridebreaker and Kraken Triforce. I still like. Like it's funny how we're gonna get in season 14, and I would have still not figured out the items for season 13 yet. Like not completely at least. And it's not only me, it's like all trainer players, because like um Triforce has been popular among trainer players only for the last like three weeks or so. When it was like secret, really strong for such a long time. Okay, that was not good. But still, that's not what we're looking at. We're gonna be looking at objectives. Up, 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 up. Well, as I said, also, like, yeah, you can abuse the sustain. Like, I, I played terribly and I had to use my ult, but now he's running out of mana and I am gonna be full HP in like two Qs or something. Probably what's gonna make me kill him again. Yeah, you see how I press Q? It was really important that I press Q preemptively because because he has a uh, like huge damage with his W active. Now we just abuse the sustain as I said on the play before like this this kill we abuse the sustain, the kill before we abuse the um, as I said, like the, the all-in potential, because he has no escape. Now I see gray spots. Uh, let's show my side. Uh, if I go for this wave, it's most likely because it's going to give me Kraken. I think it's 1400 for Kraken at this point. Or 1700. 
So I'm gonna sell the shell. Okay, never mind. Okay. Let's see. When do we start playing for objectives? So at this point now I have Kraken, so I managed to come back in the game. Uh, he's building Virtue, but he doesn't have it yet. So now I'm gonna just like freeze the wave and look for big Orleans. But let's remember, we are playing for objectives starting at uh, second rig. Like uh, that, that was kind of the plan, that was kind of the play. So I was happy this game because we took first rig pretty late into the game. So I could like stay and, and, and keep building a lead and get and get play teams before before I had to play for, for second rig. Here, yeah. Just an item advantage. Just going for that all in. I almost messed that up. Healing spree. So we're back. Ooh, I see Graves. I don't see uh what's his name? This guy, the new one, Huawei. Okay, see him now. I can go for one plating. Don't put myself off tempo by tier two boots. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm still I'm still a bit tired from yesterday, but but I swear it's gonna probably have value later this game. Um. I mean, this skirmish, I like. I, I, I wouldn't mind participating in it if Talia wouldn't be dead by the time that I'm going there. So let's see, objective timers, objective timers. It's gonna be Drake in three minutes. Let's see how I set that up. So now I see that Huey is bot, and I see that it's, um, Varus is mid. So you could ask why are you not hard pushing right now? It's because like. I'd rather have a big wave with me whenever I'm pushing it. So my plan is to push, but I'm gonna push on that one. So now I'm crushing like 10 CS instead of six. And I'm sure that I have enough time to take that turret. And I don't have to push the, the second wave in an awkward spot. Now I have a big wave stacked in. Um, and now also my plan if I'm respecting the coaching, it's gonna be to not choose my sums here. This is really important. Like here, for example, even if I would be in, an, in a position in 20 seconds, 50 seconds, where I can kill someone using flash and ghost and ult, well, I wouldn't do it. Even if, if it gives me a kill and a tier two top. And it's the, the kind of place that I need to be practicing again that I actually used to do at some, some point in time. Just like saving my sums for the big fights, but I wouldn't do it starting on Drake 2. So now the Drake is gonna spawn in two minutes. So the goal is to pin my opponent top in, let's say, a minute or something, or a minute and a half, and then start moving, maybe push out midwave as well, and be there for Drake. So let's see how I do it. Hopefully, I did it well. I like, I am not gonna lie, like, I'm posting this content to. As, as educational content, you know, but I'm also like using it to review my own games and, and, and keep learning and practicing. So it's like win-win situation, you know, for me, <laughs> but but hopefully you can, you can get something out of it. So here, for example, I can dive this guy. I can use flash, ghost, dive the guy, use my old get T2, but it's not helping my team in any way getting the Drake. And that's the kind of place that I used to do. Like here, I would 100% go for the dive and be like, well, if someone comes top, uh, it gives space for my team, for Drake, etc. But it's not guaranteed. Like, you don't know what's going to happen there. Now, if I can pin him and move, then I can use my item advantage and I can actually, like, take responsibility. That was the whole point of it, of that playstyle. Which is most likely not even a playstyle, but just, just like playing the game. Oh, I'm supposed to. And now, so my Yone is dead. So I'm like, okay, well, Varus is still pin top or should be pin top. So I'm going to replace Yone. Now I'm ghosting because I'm like, well, killing the ADC cannot be bad like 30 seconds or like 35 seconds before Drake because by the time I'm going to kill her, yeah, 38 seconds. Maybe it was still a bit too early. Maybe I shouldn't have ghosted. But at least I'm applying pressure 
Now they're using TP and now I'm of course not gonna base. Now I'm just looking to have an impact here. Drake is spawning 20. So now I know that, okay, I need to commit on that there's a jungler here. I should give my everything. I, I use my ghost to kill the ADC. Now I still have my flash if needed for that graves. So now I wanna use my resources. Because these resources are going to end up getting us this. And it's okay if Varus farms up. And it's okay if he crushes that big wave. Like, this this breaks my heart. But nah, it's okay. It's okay. Stacking Drakes is really good. And it's going to win us the game. More than not having Varus farm some extra gold. And, and just keeping stomping the matchup, you know. So, yeah. Really proud of myself on that one. Happy would be proud of me. Most likely. And now I have two items. I want Triforce. Now we're gonna see how we play for Herald. So I cannot just go there. My team is showing bots. So let's defend that mid turret. And if I realize that I cannot play, yeah, we cannot just not play for Herald. I'm still gonna go bot, push a side lane. Get some resource. Don't have much to do here. So next objective is gonna be Nash in 140. So, again, most likely I should save my sums for Nash. I should save my sums. I should try to pin someone and I should try to rotate. That's gonna be like my gameplay most of the time. Am I not going there? I mean, I'm supposed to go for every single skirmish. I think the reason I didn't go there is, as I said, like I want to keep my everything for Nash. And I have Triforce, and Triforce is actually really good to have like damage on turrets and side lane. And my goal right now is to be as strong as possible for, for Nash. So even if Preppy said like, yeah, you should try to like just play for every fight, I think that's the kind of fight that I don't want to take. Because I, I, I'm still going to fight. I'm going to fight in 50 seconds in a minute. So having one extra key gold and saving my sums and everything when enemy team you, like used... For example, Grace, Flash, etc. I think I think that was still the right play. And I'm just like kinda calculating how I can pressure bots, but still be there on Nash. Well how good was that? I mean, it's a kill. When do I get my ult again in 50 seconds? Okay. I mean, that didn't do much. That didn't really do much. But that didn't cost, us, it cost me much either. I have my ult back up. I guess it's, it's, it's a decent play. Like I, as long as I don't use my flash and ghost, I think it's fine. Because I actually put points in my ult now all the time. I almost always put points in my ult. And and the cooldown is actually like not that long then. Okay. So so now why am I not going bot? Was it the right play? I think it was like I'm just trying to impact this Nash and I was just scared that by the time I'm actually pushing this bot wave something bad would happen. Um Oh yeah, because Talia was dead. Yeah, that's why. Talia was up, maybe I would have pushed out bot first. Okay. Now we're seeing that Paris is getting caught. I'm gonna help Yone, he didn't need help. And there's going to be Drake also in 34 seconds. And Varus is not going to be there. So hopefully I'm going to just push out this wave and sprint to Drake, right? Because that's how I'm playing these days, right? Instead of playing for top inhib and getting everything top, I'm going to rotate really good. I'm going to rotate. See? Like it's actually something that I, I like... You should realize, as speed pushers, and I should integrate and realize more, like you don't have to actually be there in order to create the pressure and, and have an impact. 
Like Caitlyn is already top because there is the pressure of me pushing and getting that top inhib. Now you just stay out of vision. That's why like Red Trinket is so important, but I didn't buy it here. But that's why Red Trinket is so important because then you know that you're out of vision and they have this pressure. You saw that pings, those pings from enemy team and then Caitlyn basing and going back top to defend. Well, now I have, I'm having time and now on Drake, this guy is dead, but the ADC is also not there. And I'm having a flank position for this fight. Now I can use my sums if I want to, just to make sure that we kill them. Should focus, yeah. Reckon is less of a focus than, than their mid laner. And now I make sure that we get that Drake. Really good. Really good. Really nice. Really proud of myself. Yeah, if that's the first video that you're seeing, the first gameplay you're seeing uh, from myself, like it's, it's just gonna look like normal gameplay and you might not understand why I'm so hyped about myself. But if you guys have been there for a long time and how I'm usually playing the game and what I usually like use to win games, you will be like seeing a big difference. This doesn't look like my gameplay. Um. Really nice, so at that point we're getting like really fed 3 items. What am I waiting for? Okay, 4 items. Waiting for Hallbreaker, I guess. Or oh, maybe Mortar Remainder. Yeah, Mortar Remainder, because I'm going to fight. I'm using less Hallbreaker. And then Yone is already pressuring side lane, so I can afford to go around top. I see Graves. I think I want to commit. I mean, he committed on me, which doesn't really make sense. I don't know why the fuck you would do that. Okay, I'm two levels up on him. Doesn't have any support. And then he's like, okay, well, let's, let's commit whatever. So now we kill the jungler. How are we gonna get Nash? Can we just take it? Again, he's pushing bot. Why is bot? So I'm the one pinging. Assistance, 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 assistance. But I'm also the one hitting, so now I'm not just being bot and praying for my team to be there. I'm just like leading the way, you know. Really nice. So we have three Drakes, one Nash, uh, one or two Heralds. I'm not sure. So, so far, so good. Let's see. Okay. So still, I mean, I, I, I don't really get why we don't have mid prior here. We didn't push mid, but I'm seeing that Yone is really strong with Hallbreaker. And I'm thinking that at this point, yes, once I get to the tier three turrets, well, we can look to fight them. But first, I would be really happy to push uh, like all three waves with Nash, like do one three one, push the waves. And then I can still look to fight and collapse from top or brought to mid. But, uh... Okay, well, just, just slaughtered their mid and ADC. But yeah, but I guess my team didn't want to push mid lane. So this is this is the, the mid lane state. We could have went triple inhib here. Okay. Now let's see, when is next Drake? 113, and look at that. Ah, I'm so proud of myself. And I was drunk and I was high. It was at 7 a.m. It's Drake in 113 and I'm pinging guys. It's Drake in 113 and probably typing that like set up Drake. Like we do, you don't want to be twerking here a minute before Drake. Like you want to make sure that you have vision there. Take your reset, spend your gold, and then you play Drake, you know? So if my team is not doing it, I'm going to do it myself. Make sure that bot is pushed in, maybe. Or now I see that, okay, they committed the date. Maybe they we're not going to get Drake because of that. Might as well get bot in him for, for Nash. Like, I'm not just going to mindlessly run to my team, whatever happens, you know. And now I think Yone did a really good job when I'm seeing their jungler top. So I might just go for mid wave and Drake. And that's something that I told you at the beginning, that whenever I'm going for this gameplay, I have a hard time like maintaining high CS. And I think that's the way to maintain high CS. Just make sure that before I move, I pushed out all the ways that I can. While still being safe, of course. 
and then taking camps on the way, etc. So now we're soloing Drake and we were here for every single objective from Drake 2 to 4 and for Nash. So yeah, that's that's really good. Well, this kind of looks like a panic ult, but I mean, it's Graves with four items. If he crits with Collector, it can look really bad, so I think it's it's fine ulting here. Again, I don't know what he, what he did. What would he like go mid range with Trendamir here? And now I think we can just end the game safely. Just have to wait for the waves to be pushed in. We're gonna pressure slowly but surely. Try to end now. If we don't end now, we can just. Oh, I think I learned how to unzoom the camera. Okay. Wait, I had it. Insane. Okay, we're gonna use that for for the next vods. I mean, not all the time. Sometimes can be useful. And then, of course, like. Yeah, like we said, you should speed push, uh, you should team fight all the time, etc. Rather than speed pushing, but then if the result of my split push is gonna be getting Nexus, like I'm gonna go for it, you know. So I still look to to hit them, I think a bit, just to be like, okay, well, I'm still apl applying my, my coaching, you know. So I think I'm gonna kill Caitlyn here. But still, like of course, sometimes I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the split. So yeah, we end up being like 15, 2 and 1 after those two early deaths. We're 7k gold up and we were there for every single objective. That made me like really proud and and this is the kind of gameplay that I should be thriving for and I should be trying to play every single game. And until I find the actually like perfect balance between like the games where I need to focus on the speed, focus on the, on the grouping. So yeah, sorry guys, I, I I can feel that the commentary was a bit sloppy today, but as I said, like I'm pretty tired, but I still want to keep um, consistent, to stay consistent with my posting and, and my YouTube videos. So I still like, even if I would be like really sick, really tired, really whatever, uh, I would still post on YouTube. I would still find content and try to make it as good as possible with my current state. So hopefully it didn't show too much. Uh, that I'm that I'm really like, yeah, kind of faded. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching it. Um, well, next video will be tomorrow, same time, same place. Well, until next time, take care of yourselves, guys. Go to kind of fun game in real life, and I will see you next time. Take care of yourself, guys. Peace. Watch out. Hey. <laughs>